welcome to today's 3D print, a little quickie. Um, I want to show you guys the difference between the CR-10 and the TiVo Tornado. Now first, keep in mind, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So these flaws are something that most users might completely ignore as irrelevant or might not even notice. I notice them because I, well, I'm kind of spoiled by my enders. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is a nose cone from the TiVo Tornado. Okay. Now, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this on camera, so I'm going to change angles and see if you can see it. But, on the TiVo Tornado, there's a difference in layer alignment, where each layer isn't perfectly laid down. And over the whole entire nose cone, nothing bad, you can actually feel it where it doesn't feel smooth, it has like a texture, a rippling texture, and that is the imperfections in the individual layers. And if you look closely from the side, you can actually see, come on, don't mess with me. Why is that messing up? Hang on. Sorry about that, I'm pretty far into a print on the tornado. It's like a 70 hour print and I do not want that to fail. <laughs> <laughs> One part of it was starting to curl up a little bit and it was going as it hit that curled up part so I just helped push it down a little bit. It probably would have been fine but if that thing breaks off the bed I'd be very very sad critter. <laughs> so anyway, looking at it from the side you can even see that the surface is not smooth. That some of the layers pop out a little bit in a little bit. Not, not wobble like you see with a Ben Z rod, just it's not perfect. Okay? I don't even know if you're even going to be able to see that. Now, I want to show you one from the CR-10. And as you can see, not as perfect as the Ender. The Ender cones are flawless. Like, literally, I would classify it as flawless. But much, much smoother. No bumps. So the CR-10 is achieving much better layer alignment from one layer height to the next. With no wobble, no deviation, no extrusion differential. The part is much, much smoother. Oddly enough, the TiVo Tornado is very good at having almost no zipper. I'm not sure why that is, but the, the zipper is virtually non-existent. It's, it's, it's there, you can see it and you can feel it, but it's very, very small. It's much more pronounced on the CR-10. You can reduce it a little bit, but only so much. Um, but yeah, the CR-10, much, much cleaner print. Now, when you're doing something, this is what I would call an engineering model. It's something with very straight flats, very consistent, smooth arcs and curves. It's more of an artificial structure. Something that has more angles and more intentional deviations or something that's more organic will display this problem less. So, here is the fin can for my rocket. Now, let's see if we can see that. You see there is a pattern on here and deviations, but the deviations are less important because they kind of jive with the shifting that's already taking place. You can see them. If you look at it at the right light, you can see where there are, where the deviation is not consistent, where it changes. Like it's a little different right here in this section of the fin right here. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but right in this section here, it's a little different than the rest. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm just giving you different angles, hoping at some point you'll see that. Right here, it changes. Same thing over here, it changes a little bit right here. It's not quite the same. Well, if you look at the print from the CR-10, you know, the same noise is there, the same ringing, shadowing, ghosting, whatever you want to call that. That's there. That's endemic in, I guess, the way the printer works and moves. But it's consistent and smooth all the way across the entire surface. You don't see those, you see right there, is a, right there is a good view. You can see it's very even and consistent. So for these straight edges, it's not a problem. And also if you look here at the surface of the model, you see all those little flat spots? Okay, those are not imperfections in the print. Those are actually perfections in the print. Um, I don't yet know how to use Fusion 360 well enough to combine this part with this part with this part. This is, um, 
I have a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, cut out down the middle, and the four fins added. I don't know how to do that in, in Fusion 360 yet. I do know how to do it in Tinkercad. So I import my nose cone, which is basically this nose cone right here, into Tinkercad, and then I add these components to it. So I import this, I import this, I add them, I do the cutout down the center where I need it for the paper tube, because you can see there's an actual ridge inside there where the, the paper tube sit inside of here so it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, um, or so it doesn't jam up. And um, so that's a that's decimation where Tinkercad reduces the resolution of the model slightly when it imports it, and that manifests as these little flat areas. It's basically reducing the number of triangles that make up the object. On the nose cone, that's straight out of Fusion 360, so I maintain the high resolution and you don't see those decimation triangles. But this is the exact same part as this. Okay, I literally just took this nose cone, cut the bottom off and added the threads to it, and then added the fins to it. Okay. Now on the TiVo, let's see if I can get that same angle for you. Oh, there it is a little bit. The Mac, the apple green doesn't shine as well, but you can see the difference. Now, if we look closely at this one, again, it's hard to see because of the apple green, but you can still see the decimation from Tinkercad, but it's actually a little smoother. It's a little muddier. So you might think that looks better, but that's actually an indication of lower resolution because it's not able to reproduce the decimation triangles from Tinkercad as accurately. So you end up with a slightly muddier finish. Now, oddly enough, sometimes a slightly lower resolution can help because it makes the part a little smoother, but when you do something that requires precision smoothness like this, you see the difference where it's not as nice a finish, both visually and physically, as the CR-10. So the CR-10 basically can realize a higher resolution on X and Y, and probably Z, than the Tornado can. And that's with the smoothers. Um, the Tornado would have a lot of trouble making this nice smooth side of the Dragon. That would not look as nice. You would see a lot more of these kind of imperfections that are at the bottom here. These very slight ones, they'd be more pronounced and there'd be more of them. Now. If you're printing something artistic and organic, such as faceless, this becomes largely irrelevant. Uh, let's see, let me show you. Look at his face mask covering his face, and you can see the ripples. Those are the imperfections. Okay? And look at the back of his head here. Okay? If you look at the side of his head, it's nice and smooth. But if you look at the back of his head, see the ripples going across here? You can even feel them. Those are the imperfections. Those are not in the model. Those are artifacts generated by the printer. So it's not as high a resolution as the CR-10. But as you can see, from a one-foot distance, you can't really tell unless you're looking for it. So the TiVo Tornado is, to me, slightly inferior in resolution versus the CR-10, CR-10S. But the TiVo Tornado does have a distinct advantage, especially once you add the smoothers it can go to higher temperatures, and it can do it fast. Also, um, he just sent me a new coupon code, which I hope still works. I, some of these coupon codes are limited in how many they'll sell at that price, but $329. I can ignore some of these imperfections for $329. <laughs> the CR-10S is $500. All right, so for if you need to do ABS, or if you're only doing organic, artistic style prints, the TiVo Tornado is just fine. It takes somebody anal like me who wants that beautiful machined finished look to have a problem with it. I'm printing a Kajai Tower right now on the Tornado and it's looking spectacular. I mean, it's looking absolutely amazing. So the Tornado is a good printer. So when I say there's a difference, that is a difference that I perceive because of my wants of ultra high resolution. They are visible. You can see the imperfections, but they're not destructive. They don't ruin the print. Unless, of course, you're seeking that high resolution, then, so for example, for prints like this, I use the CR-10. For prints like this, I can use the Tornado. I can use the CR-10 as well, but why not use the Tornado if it does just a good enough job? So, 
for this kind of print with lots of smooth sides, don't use the tornado. If you have no smooth sides, if it's all over the place, you know, it's organic, it's busy, then use the tornado, it's just fine.